Okay, just to give me a minute. You are resuming. I need to check first. Okay, just. A yes, sir. Okay, Gargi. So very good morning to all. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, let me know about yourself. Yes. Um, hi, I am Gargi Lone. Uh, I am an electronics and telecommunication engineer, and I have a varied experience spanning over seven years. Uh, which encompasses uh, different modules such as SAP material management, corporate marketing, and being a coding instructor. Uh, one of the exciting chapters of my career has been my entrepreneurship journey, wherein um, I have built, uh, co founded, and expanded Steam Studio co working spaces. So it was during this uh, I realized how important it is to take data driven decisions. And hence, I decided to delve into Python and data analytics skills during my maternity break. Uh, also, I am a voracious reader, which gives me insights and perspectives into uh, different aspects. I am a uh, fitness enthusiast, which, which brings in my skills of perseverance and discipline, which I feel are one of the key aspects that a career professional uh, should have in his life. Uh, currently, I am aggressively looking to uh, start and work as a data analyst. Just a minute. Yeah. Yes, so. OK, so uh, uh, from where you did your engineering? Yes, Gargi, is that audible? Yes, Sanket Akansha, is that audible? Okay, I think there is some network issue at Gargi's end. I'm really sorry for the disconnect. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. so Lugargi, my first question is from where you did your engineering? Uh, I completed my engineering to, in 2013 from Modern College of Engineering, Pune University. Okay, Pune University. And yeah. after that, you joined uh, uh, diff several companies, I think so. Okay, yeah. so your profile is highly experienced. Okay, in the field of uh, marketing, management okay and you are a coding instructor as well uh, at byju's okay. yeah. so uh, why are you deciding to come here uh, in the field of data engineering ml and data science uh, so basically uh, after i graduated uh, i joined as a graduate engineering trainee with jbl service and I was thoroughly enjoying my career uh, and uh, that it was during 2015 that I got engaged and uh, my partner was uh, working with TCS so we decided to uh, continue further with our respective jobs but due to some family problems he had to shift to Nagpur and leave his jobs to work from home profiles weren't much available then uh, with him, I also came back to Nagpur. SAP material management uh, jobs were not that prevalent uh, in Nagpur during that time. Uh, we decided to start our entrepreneurship journey. We looked at our uh, strengths so uh, and the opportunities available in Nagpur. Uh, we decided to build a brand that is in studio for working spaces, but I wanted my career to uh, fly as well, so I took up various jobs. As I mentioned already, we expanded co-working spaces to three uh, locations in the span of over four years. And um, expanding it and surviving this grant during a COVID times was real challenge. And uh, it was during this time, I, as I mentioned, uh, the power of data I understood, right? So uh, the decisions that I had to take also, uh, as I have 
completed my uh, uh, the brand is on autopilot mode my maternity breaks are done my kids are also well settled i need to rebuild my career as well and data analytics is the field i think i've chosen is the one of the best fields to work in okay no issue actually this field is interrelated with the sap what you did mm -hmm. earlier okay so definitely yeah. it will add on to your uh, resume only and it's good choice uh basically whenever we are talking about this machine learning and data engineering data science it's more around about the application of mathematics yes. so how you feel uh, that you, how much you are comfortable in the mathematics field mm. um, basically uh the reason that i chose engineering and vocational subjects during my 11th standard uh, proves that i am much mathematically oriented or statistically driven uh, one of my favorite subjects during mathematics were m2 m3 uh, m1 m2 and m3 so uh, i do like mathematics uh, the statistics gives a new perspective to it as well i know it's very challenging but uh, the, uh, the it's always correct or false true or false there is no between in mathematics so okay, no issue, issue. Uh, actually it's good to have an interest in mathematics because uh, if you want to survive in this ml and data science field yes. then mathematics is primary yes. okay so let's start some technical questions sure. uh, let us assume that if i want to find out the outliers in my data sets then what strategies you have for that do you have idea about outliers Yes, sir. Um, so basically, outliers are uh, the data sets which are way outside your uh, given uh, data sets, which are like far away. Can I take a pen and paper just to explain? So, Uh, you are not audible not audible uh still you are not audible i don't know what is the problem again rejoin if you can not audible so if it is possible you just rejoin okay still you are not audible you just rejoin you just rejoin yes 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 Hello. Yes, yes. Now it's audible. 
Yes, sir. Uh, so the question that you asked me is, uh, what are the outliers and how? What are the strategies to uh, predict an outlier? So as I mentioned, outlier is a data set which is far beyond the uh, given data set. Um, the one of the strategies that I know is about a Z square, a Z score. So in that uh, we make a uh, we cluster the uh, data sets which are closer to each other's. It is one of the normalization or standardization uh, techniques. It's a standardization technique, but you cannot use it uh, for outlier purpose. Okay. So outliers means how you are uh, saying that this uh, data is a outlier data. There might be some parameter now. Uh, I'm not sure like how to de uh, how to detect an outlier uh, but uh, it is uh, way beyond the uh, given data set it's far away from uh, the data set that's okay, so this far away how to decide this point is far yes. away and this point is not uh, they, that, there is basically a <coughs> graph. Uh, so this it this graph is like a bell graph. Uh, this is like a mean uh, uh, mean of uh, the values, and uh, these are the uh, deviations. But something which lies way out of this that uh, is an outlier. It is yes. Useful. Yes. Yeah. So there is always a parameter to find out the outliers, find and there are lots yeah. of techniques to find out the outliers. You can use a visualization yeah. technique. Uh, you can have a, a different mathematical formulas as well. Okay. Yeah. Like uh, interquantile range, you need to find out, and exactly. accordingly you can find out the outliers. Okay. No yes. issue. Then. Uh, can you tell me, uh, let us assume that if I want to uh, divide a range, okay, from 1 to 100, if I want to divide this range in uh, 18 equal parts, okay, there is a range from 1 to 100, I want to divide this range into 18 equal parts. So which Python function will help you to do this? Uh... I know the syntax. Uh, the starting and the end point is uh, 1 to 100. Uh, yes, I, uh, I, we know that the, we have to take the start point 100 and then the third uh, parameter would be uh, 18. The function name I'm not able to uh, recall at the moment. So. My question is not that. Okay, I am mm -hmm. saying that I want to partition 1 to 100 into 18 equal parts. Okay. I am not asking that I want every 18th element. Okay. So if you want uh, uh, every 18th element, then you have a range function. Yes. Okay. Range from 1 to 100, comma 18. Okay. So 18, you will get all the numbers in the range of 18. Yes. But what is my question? I want uh, you want to partition the range from 1 to 100 in the 18 equal parts. So first of all, you need to decide one part is how much, okay? And then you need to put that number into this range function. But that is again a burden for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So there is the one function you might be aware about this line space function. Yes. Okay. So that function is basically help you to do this. Yes, sir. Okay. Now the next question is if I have plot a box plot, okay? box plot then which kind of information you are getting from that box plot mm, sorry so i'm not aware okay <laughs> so do you have about the visualization techniques different visualization yes. techniques yes and yes. the different uh, uh, you can say that uh, uh, graphs Okay, so there yes. is a one graph of box plot. Okay, yes. so box plot is basically gives you the uh, five point yes. summary. Okay, yeah. it will give you the quartile ranges Q1, Q2, Q3, this kind of, then it will give you the median. 
okay yeah. and it will give you the high point low point okay so this kind of uh, information you will get with the help of box plot okay now let us assume that there are a hundred people in the room okay and i wa uh, i know the ages of all the hundred people okay i want to draw a graph okay which shows the count of the person or the count of the people belongs to the some particular age group okay so let us assume that there are 100 people so i want count of all the age groups from 1 to 10 how many people 10 to 20 how many people 20 to 30 how many people then which graph i will prefer to draw histogram sir okay so do we have any idea about the syntax how to draw a histogram uh Uh, we have to mention the x uh, what goes on the x axis and the y axis like the people and the age and we have to give the uh, range like uh, the exact syntax uh, i'm not sure yet okay okay no issue so i at least you know, know the application where we can use which kind of a graph so that is good uh, the next question uh, from the machine learning Okay, so what do you understand? What is the difference between linear regression and logistic regression? Uh, so, uh, linear regression basically is uh, uh, again, if I could use pen and paper uh, to explain, uh, it would be great. So basically, the leap. Oh, no okay. need to explain linear. that thing that oh. this kind of a graph we will get from yes. the help of linear regression and all. I just want to know the where you are applying the linear regression and where you are applying logistic regression. Okay, so uh, linear regression is used when there is uh, when one uh, independent variable and a dependent variable have a, a logic uh, when they are related, like uh, there is one relation, and you can draw a linear line, straight line. Uh, but uh, when there is no straight line, you have to draw a, a to match it. The, uh, that is. Uh, there are not they are not exactly dependent on each other so there are multiple factors which are dependent on the independent variable okay so actually uh, whenever somebody asks you uh, related to machine learning algorithms okay so first of all you need to tell the application where we can use and which kind of a problem we can solve okay, okay. so the basic difference between the linear reg regression and logistic regression is a linear regression solves the regression problem, whereas the uh, logistic regression solves the classification problem. Correct. Okay, it's yes. a classification algorithm. Yes. So you will get yes or no, high or low, zero or one. Okay. Yes. And whereas if you want, uh, if you are using a linear regression, it will predict the continuous values. Yeah. Okay. So you need to understand which kind of a data we have what is our target if our target is related to a domain okay like yes or no high or low zero or one then definitely you need to go for logistic regression okay. but let us assume that if your target is a continuous okay so let us assume that tomorrow's temperature you want to predict so tomorrow's temperature might be 18 degree 19 degree 19.1 19.2 whatever it is okay so this is a continuous values in that case yeah. you cannot go with the logistic regression Okay. Yes. Okay. See, both the algorithm is solving the two different kinds of a problem. Okay. Yeah. Why this regression word is there? Okay. You know, uh, linear regression solves the regression problem. Logistic regression solves the classification. Yes, yeah. Okay. Still, it is a logistic regression. Okay. So my question is, why it is regression? What is the meaning of this regression word? Uh, regression is basically prediction like uh, uh, what will what are we going to predict uh, and how the output will be uh, received from the given uh, inputs actually regression is not uh, any prediction or anything uh, like that okay regression is one kind of a technique which identifies the relationship between the independent and dependent dependent and yes Yes. Okay, it's a technique to identify the relationship between the independent and dependent. Okay. Yeah. okay, now do you have an idea about Nebes algorithm? 
Non so. Non so. Okay. Uh, do you have any idea about the algorithm which is unsupervised? Yes. Which one? So uh, basically, uh, machine learning has uh, four uh, algorithms: supervised, unsupervised, uh, and uh, reinforcement algorithms. Uh, in the unsupervised, fourth one is semi-supervised. Okay. Semi-supervised. So, uh, so under the unsupervised, uh, basically uh, there is a clustering. Uh, is class classification is used. So. Um, uh, KN method, KN classification comes under unsupervised to given uh, KN classification. K means yes. Sorry? K means or KNN? No, K, K, K means. KNN is supervised, K means is unsupervised. Okay, so uh, tell me the, how K means works. Um, K means work. It is. It takes the. Uh, it forms the clusters. Uh, basically, uh, uh, it goes the classification into. If the when the data is widely spread, uh, it forms the classification and makes a bigger uh, bigger uh, cluster. See, uh, classification problem is completely different. Okay, and the clustering problem is completely different. You cannot justify the clustering problem with the term in the terms of classification. Yes. Okay, so basically, whenever we are talking about the supervised machine learning algorithm, it solves two problem: regression and classification. Yes. Okay, and if I am talking about the supervised machine learning algorithm, then it solves two kind of a problem: one is association, and second one is clustering. So, okay. if you are defining any clustering algorithm. Okay, with the help of classification, then it is not good. Okay, you have to tell the clustering. Okay, and clustering and classification both are different. Okay, in the clustering, we don't know the target. Okay, based on the features of the data, we are clusters. We form the cluster that this data is a similar in nature. That's why we are forming one cluster. Okay, in the classification, we know the target. Okay, yes. what is meant by target? Yes or no, zero or one, mm -hmm. high or low. Mm -hmm. Okay, this mm -hmm. is the target. So classification is completely different. Clustering is completely different. Okay, now next, uh, can you tell me what are the different data types in R programming? Uh... So I haven't known much about the R programming. I know uh, Python uh, uh, better than R. Basically. Okay, okay, okay. So no issue, but uh, you are uh, in your resume, you have uh, written that proficiency yes. in R. So some might, might be somebody ask you R questions. Okay. okay. So sure. this is very basic questions that at least you need to know the data types in R. Okay. okay. Nobody will ask you the uh, coding questions in R because whatever the problem you can solve with the help of Python, that is same you can solve with the R. And you just need to know the conversion of Python program to R program. But for this conversion, you at least need to know the data types of R. Okay. So what is my suggestion? You just concentrate on data types in R and the loops. Okay. What are the different loops and function callings in R? That's it. Nobody will ask you the complete program to write in R. But okay. if you are a compatible in Python, no issue. Okay. okay. But if in any industry, if they are working with the R programming, then definitely they want some basic idea about there. Okay. <coughs> I, could, um, I can answer the same question for Python, from the Python, like data types in Python. Python, uh, it's very easy. It's very okay. easy. Okay. That's why I'm not asking that question. If you are... Sure. Uh, yeah. Next is related to SQL. So, how much comfort you are comfortable in SQL? Uh, I am just an intermediate, uh, uh, beginner uh, level at SQL. So. Okay, okay. So, let us assume that I have a two tables. In one table, I have a roll number of student and name of the student and the address of the student. In second table, I have a roll number of the student the email ID of the student and the contact person, contact number of that student. Okay. So let us assume that if I want to find out the uh, contact number of Vishal. Okay. So how you can find out? Okay. See, 
in the table 1 and table 2 so these are the two table table 1 table 2 so in table 1 we have a roll number name and address in table 2 we have a roll number email id and the phone number hmm. uh, we will have to uh, uh, join uh, two tables uh, so uh, uh, we will uh, join two tables uh, by using uh, uh, right join so basically uh, we will we'll use the right join technique sir okay joining technique is again a one, uh, one solution and second yeah. solution might be you can use a nested queries okay yes query within a query uh, that might be solve your problem okay yeah. uh, from where you create this resume it's very means perfect uh, so i have uh, uh, i've used ai uh, websites to create the resume okay. any specific website uh, out outshiner outshiner yeah okay. It's good. It means it's perfectly uh, given all the information related to you, and it's good. Okay, so Gargi, we will wind up here. Uh, just few suggestions. Your profile is good. Okay, you are you did uh, lots of ta uh, lots of things in your previous employment. Okay, so you uh, you means in any company you can apply. Okay based on your application, uh, means your uh, experience, okay, and uh, it's good. Second thing is uh, you need to more focus on the syntactical part, uh, okay, and you need to know the applications, okay. In the interview, most of the time syntax nobody asks, but application they ask, okay. okay. Like my one question where you can use box plot, okay, how to okay. identify the outliers, these are the very popular questions, okay. So these things you need to focus. And second thing is whenever we are talking about machine learning, so by looking at the data, okay, so if somebody asks you, I have this, 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 this data, so at least you need to identify which kind of a problem is this and which kind of algorithms can solve this problem or can solve this kind of a, uh, issue. Okay. okay. If you know this, then how to apply that? Everything is available on internet. Okay, nobody is okay. writing a code with the help of uh, their knowledge and all. Okay, definitely okay. you need to search for the syntax. Okay, so syntax is not an issue, but at least the application of the algorithm, where you can apply which kind of algorithm, that is very important. And that is basically a skill. Okay, that okay. skill you need to develop. Okay, rest of the things is good from my side. Okay, no issue. If you have any doubts or any question, you can ask. Yes, sir. Uh, that you mentioned about the, I mean, uh, you mentioned about the resume being good, but uh, still I'm trying it difficult to get uh, shortlisted. So if there is anything that I need to mention, I understood what technical skills I, that I have to improvise, surely work on them. Anything related to the resume that I need to add? Okay, so to where you are applying, uh, you need to have a very uh, good nokri.com profile. Okay. Yes. Actually, basically what I identify now, with uh, nokri.com and indeed okay these are the two uh, very good platforms for searching yes. a job okay and people are getting a direct offers from these two websites mm -hmm. if you are trying for any other websites i don't have any idea and that those websites are not that much uh, popular okay they are having a might be they might be having a contacts and all but yeah. if you are talking about the genuineness, the genuineness is indeed and the nokri because okay. I experienced these two websites. Okay, personally. Second thing is uh, lots of things you have written here. Uh, it's good, no issue. Uh, I think you need to apply more uh, aggressive. Yes. Uh, yes. More aggressive. Uh, whenever you are writing that. Uh, Covering letter, na, while applying, yeah. there might be a covering letter. So yeah. you need to highlight these points based on their company requirements. Okay, so yeah. see, your profile is containing SAP, so you might be not having any issue for getting a job. Okay, SAP is very good. Okay, 
alone acp is also giving you a very good job okay no need to have this python and all okay mm -hmm. but if you are having this so definitely this, this is the add so there might be a some mistake while applying okay or while writing a covering letter okay mm -hmm. so just use the ai tools like chat gpt or all uh, for writing this covering letters and it takes time while applying it takes time okay you need to fill a lot a huge form and all but it works okay means if you are spending uh, that time okay while applying then it works because your resume is good no issue okay nobody nobody will challenge this resume but yeah you need to apply very accurately my other uh, difficulty that i am facing is so uh, it it gives around an experience of 7 years like overall experience of 7 years but if i go through specific experience uh, the middle wala experience doesn't count that much only sap 2.6 years and this 6 months of internship is what is getting valued to so i think they are considering the middle as a career gap or something point 2.6 okay see if you are having a 7 years of experience so at least you need to write a 5 years of experience okay mm -hmm. definitely you don't have a uh, that 2 or 2 and a half years of experience in relevant field but still that is the experience okay yes. you did a marketing you did whatever the things mm -hmm. like coaching and all that is again a experience yeah you have a very good experience in sap 2.6 years that is the basically a perf but while applying just right five years of experience okay okay definitely at initial stages of your career you are uh, doing the bpo job or whatever means i am not talking yeah. about you but yeah, any yeah. other time, they might be uh, applying in that kind of a job and they are getting that job but after that you enhance your skill and you prove yourself in the field of okay. sap and uh, in the field of python and all so right five years of experience see in a data science then ml definitely they ask for a very good experience person okay mm -hmm. if they have a filter of 5 years of experience so you are mm -hmm. writing 2.6 years of experience then yeah. definitely your resume you will get rejected so at least write 5 years of experience mm -hmm. definitely they will take the interview they might be feel good in you mm -hmm. then then definitely they will hire you but at least you need to reach up to interview okay sure. so that's why you need to write 5 years of experience so make it 5 okay. years then you okay. segregate like i have a 2.6 years of acp experience then 2 years of this experience that experience that thing okay but uh, apply for 5 years of experience because your education over at 2013 and now you are applying for 2024 so only 2.6 experience is not good okay yeah okay right more than that okay so thank you gari thank you thank you so much sir thank you so, इंजीनियरिंग फ्रॉम द वाई के सी कॉलेज बिफोर दैट आई हेड जस्ट डीड माई डिप्लोमा इन दी दत्ता मेके पॉलिटेक्निक कॉलेज वाना डोंगरी कैंपस ओनली uh previous uh, i'm from the hingangad district wada and i had pursued all my 10th uh, till ss means all the fsc uh, preparation still uh, in the college of the uh, sorry in the uh, dr b r ambedkar school hingangad okay uh, so you are intern at maharel metro rail yeah. corporation yes sir okay. so what kind of a job is there uh so i was the intern there and the job was uh, like to only the site visit and uh, all about the electrical related works while uh, just like the fitting the things uh, all the uh, like insulators and all and to watching uh, and to uh, just noting all the things 
Okay. So, uh, you did your engineering in electrical department. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, uh, why you want to pursue your career in a data science and data analytics? Uh, sir, actually, uh, the thing was ki I was waiting for the Maharel uh, opening. Uh, from past two year, I was uh, just doing the preparation of uh, all the thing uh, for getting the job into the metro rail. But uh, from uh, two years, there was no any opening in the metro rail. So I think if uh, there was no any opening, because my mindset was I just want to join only the Maha Metro, not other in the electrical department. And uh, as per my family reference, so they asked me and with uh, their permission and with my satisfaction, I just uh, uh, tried and just joined the uh, data analysis course. Okay, so how you rate yourself in the field of programming? Uh, so programming nearly six or seven. Okay, so are you interested in a program? Yeah. Okay. Because actually, uh, from uh, starting, I just aware. I'm not aware from the program. Means uh, just like me, I felt that programming means a very big thing. And after learning some uh, codes with the Anupsar and all, uh, the programming is just right now getting easier. Okay. See, programming might be easier, but problem solving is difficult. Okay. See, programming is just a syntax. Okay, you need to apply the syntax for loop or while loop or uh, data structures and data types. See, the, what we are asking is problem solving skills. Okay, programming anybody can do. Even the student, if the, I ask, write a for loop. Okay, and if I already taught him how to write a for loop, then he can write. But the actual skills that you want to develop in yourself is the logic making. Okay. So in your resume, you have written lots of skills. Okay. But in that skills part, you need to write a technical thing. Okay. There is something like a technical in your skills. Okay. You need to write a Python skill or any uh, like a problem solving is there. But you need to write that uh, I have a Python skills, data science, machine learning. Okay, so you need to write. Sure, sir. So these are not the technical skills, and if somebody wants to hire you, so based on your technical skills only. Okay. Sure. This definitely this skills is also uh, good to show, but uh, it will not impact while hiring. Okay. okay, sir. Second thing is uh, <clears throat> you have to uh, write some projects, okay, uh, related to coding. Okay, okay. So the prediction protection system. So this, uh, this basically project containing any coding or what? Uh, no, sir. Actually, it is connected on the. Uh, that uh, there was the one of the language which was done by the six members and i was there had uh, hardcore maker there at that time mm, it was whatever the projects you are writing here na, my, most of the projects is not uh, required any type of coding okay, okay i think so as per my understanding okay so at least whatever the projects you did in your uh, training na, that you need to showcase Definitely, you just keep these projects as well. But those projects are important because if somebody wants to hire you for a data science or machine learning or data engineering role, data analytics role, uh, they expect some coding related projects. Sure. So, this is the uh, basically a feedback related to your uh, resume. Otherwise, the resume is good. Okay, from where you create this resume? Uh, sir, it is from the Novo resume. No resume. No wo. N O V O. Achha, no wo resume. Okay. okay, no issue. Uh, it's good. And uh, let's start some technical questions. Okay, so that I can give you the feedback related to your technical knowledge. Okay, 
so let us assume that i want to uh, partition uh, the series from 1 to 100 in a 15 different equal parts okay from 1 to 100 15 different equal parts okay then which python function will help me to do that mm if you can patch it python function okay uh mm -hmm. no not exactly okay okay <sighs> so uh, do you have idea about the uh, graphs visualization techniques um, no sir so you don't have any uh, knowledge about the matplotlib c1 uh, so actually uh, i just uh, right now i'm just uh, working on the sql uh, means i'm just studying and uh, just uh, my, one of my family member relative is in then uh, the field of the sql and oracle so okay. right now i'm just studying uh, the oracle and sql right now okay so let's have questions on sql okay sure. let us assume that i have a two table table 1 and table 2 these are the sure. name of the tables table 1 and table 2 sure. in table 1 i have a three columns one column is roll number name of the student and the address of the student okay in table 2 i have th again three columns roll number email id and the phone number okay let us assume that if i want to find out the uh, contact number of vishal okay so vishal is one of the student okay then what is my, my what is my sql query for that so we should have to join the table first of all uh and the sql query should be uh, just like uh so i can perform it i can't tell it but i can perform it okay so which Make kind of more. joins uh, you know in sql uh sir so inner join and outer join only two joins you know right now sir there is no uh, left join right join Sir, left. There are the many types of the join: inner join, outer join, left join, and uh, but right now I had just did the inner join and outer join. Okay, what is the difference between inner and outer join? Uh, sir, so the inner join uh, is the where the table is just join in between the one means we should have to one common uh, point should be there in the uh two table to get the inner join it get join just like uh, uh if we have the roll number and roll number on the both the point only that uh, that there we can use the inner join so what will be the ultimate output in uh, inner join if i have this two table one table one table two what will sure. be the output uh so the output will be uh, all the table will be both the table will be get connected with the each other and uh, in both the table the output will be like contact number roll number email id and whole the uh, means the roll number get commonly it will get separated only one and other which are different that will show and in the outer join case uh in the outer join uh both the uh, roll number roll number both the column will be get separated both will show separately see so if you are talking about the difference between inner join and outer join na, then uh, you need to focus us on on the which basis these joins are happen okay Okay. roll number column you are getting one time and at the outer join roll number column you are getting two times this is not those explanation okay why we are getting that two columns in the outer join roll number two times okay that is a basically a important thing okay so whenever we are talking about the inner join then from both the table only the match entries you are getting okay mm. So if in the table one there are some roll number, ah, uh, ten roll numbers, and in table two there are ten roll numbers, but within these ten roll numbers, the exactly 
matched roll numbers you are getting in the inner joint okay so let us assume that out of uh, 10 10 only four number four roll number in the table one and table two both only four entries you are getting okay. sure but whenever we are talking about the outer join, then in the outer join you will get how many entries? 16 entries. In entries. Okay. So this is the problem. This is the basically a difference between the inner and outer. Okay. Sure. <coughs> so see, uh, Kostuk, as per your as per my understanding, you are just a beginner. Okay. So you might not work lots of things in a Python. Okay. So you need to work on Python. So if you want to get into this uh, data science, data analytics field, then you need to know the Python. Uh, along with this, I will suggest you to work on the tools. Okay, it might be helpful helpful for you. Okay, rather than coding. Okay, so you are thinking that coding is an easy part, then it's not easy. Okay, so basically whenever we are doing a problem solving, at that time it is not easy. Syntax it might be help you, but uh, while solving the problems, it will be very difficult. Okay, so what I suggest you to uh, have a tools related knowledge like Tableau, Power BI, SQL. Okay, Advanced Excel. Okay, these things might help you in the data analytics. And definitely you need to work on the Python and data science, machine learning, data visualization, deep learning things. Okay. But yeah, you need to work on hard, work hard on coding as well as problem solving. Okay. Yes. At least you need to know the application where we can use which kind of algorithm. Okay. So I haven't asked you any machine learning algorithm because I know uh, you are just a beginner. So you might not able to answer that. Okay. So this is my suggestion. Okay, so by looking at the data, okay, as a data analyst or data engineer, by looking at the data, you need to know which kind of algorithm is suitable for that kind of data. Okay. Kind of a skills you have to develop. Okay, sure. so this is a skill. Okay, this is a pure skill is required. Okay. Okay, so that's it, Kostuk. Uh, if you have want to ask any question, then you can ask. No, sir. Uh, sir, I just want, if I just want to do the uh, practice, so which will be the best uh, platform? See, there are lots of platform available. Means if you want to do a practice uh, related to this data analytics, data science, then there are lots of websites like uh, uh, Analytical Vidya. Okay. These websites or uh, Coding Junk. Okay. Then uh, uh, there are some websites, data science.in. Okay, so these are the websites gives you the projects. Okay, the problem statements and a solution as well. Okay, first of all, you need to take a problem statement, think on it. Okay, and then check for the solution. And then you will understand. I see this is all the case studies. Okay, this kind of a problem is solved by this. This kind of a problem is solved by this. So and first of all, what you need to do, you just take a one case study from these websites. Okay, understand it and try to think which kind of a problem is this and which kind of algorithm we can use and check for the solution. Okay, so only this is the way to understand. Okay, so sure. these are all the case studies. Okay, that you need to understand. Okay, sure. okay Postup, thank you. Thank you, sir.